Chaos Gate Demon Hunters is set in the Tirtea Sector, a cluster of star systems quite distant from the Grey Knight's home base of Titan. You're promoted to Acting Commander by the ship's veteran purifier, Brother Ektar. Your mission's expected to be routine, and all of those plans are, of course, changed uh, abruptly when an Imperial Inquisitor arrives on board to commandeer your ship and send you off in search of evidence of an impending plague. The hunt for the truth behind the bloom and the battle to prevent it from spreading to the wider Imperium is the central conflict behind the game. The Baleful Edict is your strike cruiser. It acts as a mobile base of operations as you travel around the sector fighting the bloom's corruption. Each section of the ship gives you access to different systems that you'll need to manage over the course of the game. The Strategium is where Akdar helps you oversee the conflict against the Bloom. From here you can access the Barracks, which houses your Knights and allows you to manage their equipment and upgrades. You'll also be able to access the Armory, which is where you can review equipment made available to you by the Grand Master Varden Kai. With such high stakes riding on the mission, tension between your crew and the Inquisitor is inevitable. So you'll have to work closely with each of them to ensure your success. Brother Ektar, a veteran purifier with a well-honed sense of knightly duty. You have Dominus Lunette, an ancient tech priest of the Adeptus Mechanicus, who's responsible for tending to the needs of the ship. And finally, Inquisitor Vakir herself, whose ambition drives you further into hazard, as you work together to stop the bloom from spreading. The Grand Manufactorum is where you'll find Dominus Lunette. As the ranking tech priest, she's responsible for overseeing repairs to the Edict systems. Things like power generators, the warp drive, gun batteries, and more. It'll be up to you to prioritize which systems to restore first, to give you the best chance of keeping up with the rapidly spreading corruption. The Liberus Malleus is Vakir's temporary home on board the ship, a storehouse of valuable and secret knowledge. Here, the Inquisitor will conduct her research to better understand the Bloom. The Imperial Inquisition is responsible for hunting down anything that represents a threat to the Imperium's stability. It's organized into several divisions with the Ordo Malleus and their Chamber Militant. Although she enters this story more or less as a complete outsider to the rest of the crew, her rank as an Imperial Inquisitor gives her the authority to step in and seek out the Grey Knight's help. They are, after all, allies in the Ordo Malleus, but her position on the ship isn't exactly secure. She has to tread a really careful line when she's dealing with Ektar and the other Grey Knights. Although she's a powerful psyker, Bakir is a human, vulnerable to corruption and external influence. So you will have to balance your limited resources against her ambitious objectives keeping your squads alive and ready to tackle the next threat. At first, you can combine four different classes to make up your Grey Knight squad. There are Justicars, tough frontline warriors. Interceptors, fast and mobile skirmishers. Purgators, they are heavy weapon specialists. And the Apothecary, a powerful healer and support unit. As the game progresses, you'll open up access to an additional four specialized classes, each with their own unique abilities and tactical options to diversify your squad. One of the biggest challenges in designing a game about the Grey Knights was in capturing their distinct approach to combat. Their war gear is very unique for an Astartes. With melee weapons being a central part of their identity, their battle plan is typically geared towards getting up close and personal with foes. When fighting at range, you'll still get all the advantages you're used to, you know, things like cover protection. Overwatch, Suppression, Flanking. You can take a shot and you know what kind of damage you're going to do. But our precision targeting system opens up a ton of options for getting down and dirty in melee. To us, that meant giving you tactical incentives to break from cover and charge through hordes of enemies. By getting in close, you can strike your enemy's weak points to nullify their attacks, break down their defenses, or totally disable their abilities. Stun an enemy and you open them up to a brutal execution that can give your whole squad a momentum boost to continue the assault. And that doesn't even factor all the extra war gear, mastercrafted weaponry, and psychic abilities that will open up even more tactical options. Your knights can be fully customized with over 30 active, passive, and reaction-based abilities per class. That forces you to make some tough choices as you create the squads that best suit your playstyle. Grey Knights are not just masters of blade and bolter. They also have access to a wide range of powerful psychic abilities that can be used to subdue your enemies or provide support to your battle brothers. As the Inquisitor researches the Bloom, she will learn powerful psychic stratagems that can be used to support your squads in combat. Used correctly, they can turn the tide of an entire battle. In Chaos Gate Demon Hunters, we give you all the tools you need to face down fearsome odds, but we leave the battle plan up to you. 